Hello, welcome to Safra's World. My name is Safra and this is my pop culture channel and today we're going to discuss Dr. Sleep. Now, today in Toronto there is a huge blizzard happening so it's a great day to revisit The Shining as it were. Um, so first of all, I just kind of want to share my experience of going to the theatre. Um, well, or, or at the theater. So I don't know if it's this way everywhere, but at my theater, the first thing, uh, the first trailer they showed was Rise of Skywalker. And I was sort of expecting it because I saw the giant Rise of Skywalker promo in, in the lobby. And it kind of bummed me out because I'd been really trying not to see the new trailers. I've been trying to stay away from spoilers. And, uh, but you know, with that super loud AVX, and I'm in a movie theater, of course, I watched the trailer for Skywalker, and I'll talk about that in another video. And then, um, there was a trailer for <laughs> Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. <laughs> uh, they showed, like, in between, there was, like, Rise of Skywalker, another movie, and then uh, Ryan Johnson's movie, so I thought that was hilarious, because Ryan Johnson directed uh, The Last Jedi, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the movie before Rise of Skywalker, for those of you who don't follow Star Wars things. And then we get to Dr. Sleep, which is starring <laughs> the actor you <laughs> who played young Obi-Wan Kenobi in the prequels of Phantom Menace and so on. So it was a Star Wars experience, even though it's a Stephen King show. So uh, to me, that I just laughed in my head a lot. And I would say uh, Ewan McGregor did a great job in Doctor Sleep, though I will say because there is a bit of Dead Zone type things happening in it, you know, uh, remember the movie Dead Zone with Christopher Walking, which is still my favorite Stephen King adaptation of a uh, movie, even though The Shining is one of my favorite movies of all time, but not necessarily a uh, perfect adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining, but Ewan McGregor uh, did a great job as grown-up Danny Torrance, and uh, I have to say, just to riff on the Star Wars thing for one more second, uh, <laughs> is that <laughs> spoilers, 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 of course, it's a review, so they're spoilers, duh, so don't watch this if you haven't seen Doctor Sleep, but, uh, you know, Ewan McGregor grabbing the axe, I'm like, Where's your lightsaber, Obi-Wan? Use the Force! Use the Force! <laughs> Why can't you stop that? Rose the hat with the Force, you know? <laughs> Use your mind, Meld. Blow up the Death Star, blow up the, the hotel, right? So anyways, um, yeah, I just had fun in my own head because I'm crazy. Okay, so on with the Dr. Sleep review. Um, I did read the book when it came out many, many years ago. Uh, well, not that many years ago, but I did read it at the time. And um, I remember I didn't really like it that much. And it wasn't really that I didn't like this. It's hard to know. I still can't put my finger on it, what I didn't really like. Uh, it, it might be how a lot of us saw The Last Jedi when it comes to Star Wars is that this isn't the story that I wanted to see or hear, right? So with Dr. Sleep, I wanted, you know, when I was actually at an event, uh, one of the only times in my life I've ever seen Stephen King in person, um, not that I got close to him or anything, so it was a huge auditorium, but he, that I was there when he announced he was writing a sequel to The Shining and he read a few pages from what would be ultimately be called Dr. Sleep and then a couple years later, Dr. Sleep came out. But the story I had always kind of thought would happen uh, didn't happen. It happened kind of, um, but I always thought like if he was to revisit The Shining that the hotel itself would be calling him and they, they kind of say that but they kind of don't and when you see the movie um, you'll kind of get it. <laughs> I know I'm saying kind of a lot but it, it's hard to really describe. Um, what I'm thinking and feeling about it all and it's subjective right other people don't have these issues with the storytelling or with the plot with how the story went down or what the story even was I always was interested in a grown-up Danny um, and actually the movie I did like the movie better than the book but the movie suffered from the same issues that I had with the book which was you know um, they don't tell a lot of backstories but they focus on like a couple of people's backstories and then 
it's not clear even why they bothered and then we don't have the ultimate backstory of who Rose really is I know I went to the bathroom at one part and Dorian said I missed a little bit of exposition um, and that was when I, I left um, I think it was at the train place and then I came back when they were turning the blonde girl um, who you know hypnotizes people and stuff um, so we don't really know Rose the Hat's deal and what she wants from the steam what what the they never actually call them travelers or gypsies or Romas or whatever you want to call the these people this tribe of people um, but we don't really know what their purpose is or point is they just kind of drive around and steal souls and murder people right so maybe there's a bit of the Charlie Manson cult thing there I don't know what uh, some of the references but uh, anyways without getting all hung up on that uh, the, the movie itself isn't that scary the book isn't scary at all and um, I went to see it with my 28 year old son I went to see Dr. Sleep and he had seen The Shining for the first time a couple of years ago and uh, he actually really liked it I kept bugging him because I'm like you watch all these shows where they spoof it all the time like The Simpsons and stuff so you really need to see this movie at some point and ultimately he did watch it so he he's up to date on that I don't think he's ever read the book I'm not positive positive. and uh, so then uh, before we met yesterday for the movie he said oh so I watched uh, the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror last night to catch up on the Shining stuff <laughs> it's like oh, I really should revisit that Treehouse of Horror episode too that's really old and so his thing when he came out of the movie as someone who hadn't read Dr. Sleep and isn't like the Stephen King fan that I am um, his his thing was he felt that um, all the ghosts from The Shining it was too cartoony it was too much of a spoof it he didn't he just thought it was pretty silly and he said and his words were something like um, it's because of things like Ready Player One where we saw The Shining and things like that and he said then it's always spoofed so much in other shows that you know it's hard to really you know, and I, I agreed with him because at the ending when they're, you know, all descending on Rose, who I guess will become one of them now or something, um, it was comical. Like, I'm like, this is, I, I thought it was stupid and ridiculous. And I suppose in that kind of sense, um, it's where your imagination is scarier than the visual because seeing it, it was cool like when he, they first went to the like when they'd have the dreams and see the cre see the ghosts and then even um you know the kids go into the bathroom and see the lady in the bathtub in their own homes and even when um danny as an adult goes back in to the overlook and seeing the odd ghosts uh that was cool but then when they all kind of come out for a curtain call to get Rose, it, I don't know, it, it didn't work for me, even though I understand exactly what's happening and it's crucial to the plot. Um, yeah, so I, I you know, it, it's a good movie, it's worth seeing, and I guess if I've already reviewed it, it means you've already seen it, so I don't have to tell you to go see it. <laughs> well, let me know what you think. Um, like I said, I, I didn't hate it. I, it's not my favorite movie. It certainly isn't up there with The Shining or uh, The Dead Zone and some other uh, Carrie, the original Carrie. Um, some of those movies really were scary. And Christine was an excellent movie adaptation. Well, a lot of Stephen King movies have been scary and adapted well. And even uh, Stand By Me, it's a little more thrill thrilling or writing but there are some really great moments in Dr. Sleep and um, I liked how they did revisit the Kubrick vision since I did love that movie so I was so for a fan like me um, I really appreciated it and really enjoyed uh, the photography and the um, the the way you know they move the camera through the hallways and the original carpeting and um, little touches here and there from Kubrick's vision you know how, how they look at different angles and different ways you'd see characters and things like that you know and, and the axe and the maze and all these sorts of things I, I really enjoyed that and I enjoyed how um not enjoyed but I, I was I did recognize how when they were filming the girl 
who what was the pusher or the you know the one who's scratching people's faces how they would photograph her with her face down doing the jack nicholson face down thing um and then they had an actor playing the jack nicholson character you know danny torrance's dad uh jack torrance um he he was pretty good dorian didn't like him he didn't think he looked like him enough but i I thought it was just fine uh and so again filming them on the original angles and revisiting moments from the original story i really enjoyed that I, i did a lot so here we are there we go what did you think of dr sleep i have more to say but let's keep it short today bye for now